What is up, everybody? Josh Tapp here again, and welcome back to The Lucky Titan. And today we're here with Steve Edwards, who is actually one of three Steve Edwards I know, but he's the coolest. I'm just going to say it right here. Hopefully there are two Steves don't hear this, but I'm excited to have Steve here because he is the CEO and founder of Premier Virtual. This guy really capitalized on the coronavirus impact on career fairs and taking them completely virtual. And I love his model, and I'm excited to hear how they've been doing, how they actually grew the company, obviously through the pandemic and really where they're going right now. So Steve, say what's up to everybody and we'll hop in. How are you doing? Steve Edwards here. Look forward to uh, being on the show today. Yeah, it'll be exciting. So Steve, you know, let's, let's talk through this because you were explaining this to me before the interview where, you know, you, you come from a sales background, but you also saw that the recruiting industry was just a nightmare, right? <laughs> That's one of the hardest industries to work in from, I mean, I haven't personally worked in it, but I do know a lot of people who have, and, and it's one of those, it feels like a sales job, but it's also like an HR position. It's really such an interesting position. So walk us through that epiphany moment that made you realize you needed to start Premier Virtual. So when I got out of the army and came to Florida for college, I got into the job fair industry because I had attended a lot of job fairs as I was building sales forces for other organizations. Uh, and I knew this company up in New Jersey that put on a different type of an event. It was an event specific or um, industry specific type job fairs. Companies got to speak in front of the candidates to say, here's who we are, here's what we do, here's what we're looking for. So to me, it was efficient. The minute I went to that job fair, I was like, this is the most efficient job fair I've ever been to in my life. I love it. When, when the company that I was with then shut down and you know, I called the owner of that company and said, let's expand. Let's expand your market. Let's come down into Florida where it really wasn't happening. And that's where I lived. And so I, I created this uh, part of that business from the North Carolina down to Florida, out to Texas and Arizona. And I was doing that for nine years. 2018, you know, people would rather apply online than wait in line. So candidates stop coming to the job fairs. When candidates stop coming, companies stop coming. So that took a hit into my revenue. You know, I had a young, uh, one young son at the time. And I'm like, how am I going to make this happen? And I had one of my mentors say, I just landed a virtual reality client. Maybe there's some synergy here. So I get on the call with this guy and this guy pitches me virtual job fairs. And I never heard of virtual job fairs. And I was like, this is the future. Instantly from the second I saw a demo, I said, this is the future. Um, so then I started, you know, running virtual job fairs. Uh, I ran five of them and my clients loved it, but they wanted more. Uh, so I came in and I went to the, you know, the owner of the other company. I said, I want to switch hundred percent virtual. He's like, nope, nope. I want nothing to do with virtual. So I parted ways. Uh, and we came down here and this was in December of 2018. I was going to a LinkedIn local event and it was all recruiters that were, that was the uh, group that was put on. And I was there and they were like, the thing is, is what's going to be your impact in 2019? And I came and on my way down there, I said, this is it. I am starting uh, the company. I didn't know the name of it yet, but I said, I'm going hundred percent virtual. I'm going to build my own platform. And I announced it that night, in December, 2018, every recruiter started laughing at me and they said, it's not going to work. Virtual recruiting does not work. And I was just like, hold my beer. And I just didn't realize that beer was going to be a Corona. Uh, but, you know, kind of fast forward 2019, we started developing the software uh, for the virtual platform. Uh, August, we started testing it with live clients. November, I switched the business model. I said, I'm not going to put on virtual job fairs anymore. I'm going to license my software. So that organizations out there that, you know, from a small mom and pop shop, could do a, a virtual job fair up to the Amazons of the world that could do uh, that. And, and, and I'll say Amazon was something every year in, around October, you hear them start to advertise, right? In 2018, it was, we want to hire 10,000 people in a week. 2019, it was, we want to hire 20,000 people. In 2020, it was, we want to hire 100,000 people. And I'm like, any company can do this. Any company could have a national hiring event. Right. But Amazon just had the power of the name. And I said, anybody can do this. And so, you know, we switched the business model, started licensing the software, launched ours, landed our first big client in January of 2020, started getting ready for everything. COVID hits. From the minute COVID hit in March, um, we started doing events. 
from April until December, we did over 2,500 virtual events or 2,000 virtual events. Wow. From there. And I'm like, I did more events in eight months than we did nine years of in person events. We had more people, there was more data. And it was just, what do people want from a, a you know, an, an entrepreneur that's starting their business that wants to grow? They want analytics, right? They want to, they want to see how many people came to the job fair, how many people, you know, registered, how many logged in, what did they look at when they were in the job fair? And I just, I built it. A lot of the things that I built in the reporting aspect and the analytics were stuff that would frustrate me at job fairs that I would go to a company and say, how many people did you talk to at the job fair? I don't know. How many resumes did you get? I don't know. I'm like, oh, well, it looks like you got a big stack. How many interviews did you schedule? I don't know. So I wanted to put all of that information kind of into the virtual platform of it. And then we had, you know, the our legacy platform got launched and, you know, we did some really good things on it. And then we just launched, um, not even a month ago, our second version of our software. And we did an event last week on the software that had 1,691 companies on it and wow. 17,000. It's a record job fair that's out there. The most companies that have ever been on a job fair um, and 17,000 candidates and almost a million booth views. So that means almost a million times somebody logged in to look at one of the booths that were out there. So, geez, well, congrats. That's a huge accomplishment, especially, I mean, you said you started this really, I mean, the virtual side of it, like last year. Correct. So, so you, and, and I guess the question behind my mind and most of the people who are, are listening to this are probably wondering the same thing is how do you get that many businesses involved that quickly, let alone the candidates who are looking for jobs? What was your strategy? Well, one is I hired a phenomenal team and, you know, I made I made some phone calls to we had a team when, you know, when this first started. You know, we had just hired, it was myself, my business partner and an admin, and we had just hired two people to kind of dial the phones for us. And when, you know, we went and some of them, and they weren't even here two weeks and then COVID hit and went from coming into an office to go home and work. Um, and we actually had three that we hired, but, you know, one guy, uh, we used to call him Sleepy T because every morning he would wake up and he's doing all of his calls from his bed and he didn't want to work. Um, but we went, now we have almost 30 on our team and it was just bringing in, I called in some of my buddies that I was in the army with that I knew were in sales that looking, one of my friends was company 19 years and he called me, lost his job due to COVID. And I said, come on. Um, so we built a team and, you know, we went after, you know, part of it was Google, uh, you know, doing Google ads, but LinkedIn phone calls, you know, our, our phones were ringing too, you know, going from a, a nobody to just a couple events that we did, our name started to get out there. And, you know, once we started to get into uh, a couple of the verticals, like workforce development boards, we're now number one in that industry um, for, and every state has that. And we started to get them. And then our name started to get out there because we were doing everything to make sure that clients were happy. And I don't care what product it is that somebody's selling out there, the customer support has to be uh, there for them. And I switched to my team and I said, okay, not just sales reps, we're going to now bring account managers in. So as soon as somebody goes in, they now have a dedicated account manager so they can reach that person at all times. We handle all the trainings. I go above and beyond for my clients um, because we do this on a daily basis. Most people don't. So when somebody buys your product and they're like, how do I use it? Hey, this is really cool, but how do they use it? Um, so, you know, having the team and I would hire more customer support than I did front end salespeople because I wanted to make sure that we were taking care of our clients because we take care of our clients, then our name gets out there and then they're referring to their friends and their colleagues um, in other locations as well. And I also built the platform very easy to use um, because in software, a lot of people think, hey, I'm going to build this really cool technology. And it's cool to them. Right. But is it cool to that end user? Right. How are they going to use it? Right. That person who's you know working at Burger King or maybe a receptionist or even an HR, they may not be that tech set. So you can't make it too confusing for that. Um, so, you, I, you know, building it, 
it was really built from the end user standpoint of view to make it easy and then to make you know our, our customer support even better. So one thing I can say to anybody out there, whatever year, if it's a you know technology or anything, build it for the end user, not just all the coolest features. My, my competitors have some cool features out there, but it confuses people and they don't want to use it. So once you get them confused, they're not going to use the, use the software. Right. Well, and, and what I love about the way you've built your offer, and this is a point we've been talking about a lot on the show recently, is that, I mean, your offer doesn't have to be complex. Everybody kind of prescribes to this billion dollar company philosophy where you have to have this big complex, a bunch of different funnels, a bunch of different pieces to your company. When in all reality, especially when you're starting from the ground, just the simplest offer, you should be able to say it in like a sentence, you know, and in your case, it's like, it's a virtual career fair. It's, it's not anything quote unquote spectacular for the end user because they're, they're coming in saying, Hey, I just need to get a job. I want to see what companies are available. And for companies are like, Hey, if I could do this, you know, in shorts at my house, of course I'll do it. Right. As long as it, it yields something. Um, so I love that the offer was that simple. And I think that's honestly why you didn't need such a big sales team at the beginning, because it was so simple. Wasn't this yeah, and, and I like to say, I took a job board and a job fair. I put them together and I injected some steroids in it. Right. You know, very simple, right? What does a candidate want to do when they go to an event? They want to be able to click on a category and say, I'm looking in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for a sales job and see the company just that are hiring in sales. Then they want to see what the company does. They want to see what the jobs are, submit their resume, chat, and go into a video. And you can do that all in a matter of seconds on the platform, right? right? But if they go to that job fair and they wait in line for 30 minutes, they get to the front of the line, and all of a sudden it's like, what jobs are you having for? We're hiring for marketing. Ah, yeah, that's not what we want. Oh, I just wasted 20 minutes. Let me go to the next one. So these candidates can go in and click, see what they do, and then only talk to the companies that they're interested in. Efficiency. And, and honestly, you know, going back to my college days, I mean, the, the benefit of that for, for the person seeking a job is so much higher because you can, you can say, okay, these are, it, it's like you said, it's like a job board. You're being able to filter for, hey, these are the type of careers that I want. So I'm going to kind of turn the conversation here a little bit, Steve. I'm curious what your monetization method is with it because, you know, you're doing these massive um, events, you know, where are you making your money? So we, we, we make money in two ways. One, it's either a single event or it's an annual license. So we have organizations that you know, have signed up to five years with us. So they have five-year agreements. Um, our annual license, and I do it a little bit different. Um, one, and I'm, I got to plug this, is I didn't do what a lot of my competitors did when COVID hit. They skyrocketed their price because they looked at, I'm going to hit a home run for a little bit. Well, then it's, you know, I look at and say, hey, I'm keeping my prices where it was at because when COVID's over, which now we know that we don't know if it'll ever be over, but in the beginning, we didn't know that is, hey, they're not going to pay when COVID's over. They're not going to pay these astronomical prices. They're going to pay the normal price where I've kept my price like this. Yeah, we've had to go up a little bit um, just to cover, you know, cover costs and stuff like this, but it was crazy what someone did. So really the annual agreements are the biggest thing for us. And we let our clients have, unlimited events. I don't nickel and dine them to say, you can only have so many companies, or you can have only so many candidates, or you can only download so many resumes to this, you know, and and there's all these little things that that are out there. And and again, are there some companies out there that are making more money than me? Yes, but I'm not here just about that, right? Yes, we're we're here, right? We're going to keep the lights on, but we're also helping a lot of people get back to work. You know, like I was telling you, you know, that statewide job fair that had 17,000 candidates, I got a lot of people back to work. So that is a huge thing that's not just the financial aspect. It's also we're doing something good out there. Right. And, and I love that. I mean, that's such an interesting methodology as well, because I agree. I think a lot of people came out and said, hey, let's let's boost our prices. But the reality is that if you'll, you'll still, you're still writing on the fact that people are wanting to go virtual, but you're not saying, oh, just because that's there, I'm going to raise my price. Cause that's kind of like a monopolization tactic. I personally don't agree with that either. I think you just, you leverage that because people are going to know, Hey, this guy sticks to his guns, even when he could be making a lot more money. 
long term, you're going to outlast most of those companies because they'll just take off and disappear next year, you know? <laughs> yep. So, wow, what a unique strategy. So with you and, and the way that you've been growing this company, because you have had to scale very, very quickly, who would you say is either the key player or the key agency that's kind of that, that catalyst for your success outside of your own company? Uh, you know, that's a, uh... That's a tough question because there's, there's so many, you know, when I look at my team and, you know, when I look at who's my MVP uh, of the team is there's so many of them and, and, and they all play such a vital role. Um, you know, and I'll even say this, right. In one of the Florida magazines, we were voted, you know, number 16th small company to work for in the state of Florida. That shows that our companies are, are you know, our, our employees are here. But the company that, you know, came in and really made us a, a, a catalyst is, I, I can't even say, right, American Association of Employment Education shows our platform. So that kind of got us into the education. A uh, career source in Florida, you know, uh, work in Texas, you know, came in and just kind of got our name out there. And, and, you know, these organizations that that used us, you know, there's a, a career source, Palm Beach County. Um, the guy who runs that is Michael Corbett. And I will tell you, he has been a, a, a champion because from day one, he saw what virtual could do and, and they ran and it didn't matter if it was an individual company or a large job fair or a resource event. And, and you see some people were very blinded, right? Even when COVID came out, and they were doing the same thing over and over, right? For 20 years, they did the same thing, right? They're recruiting, same thing over and over and over. They weren't looking at new options. Um, and then some of the people that came out, like, you know, Michael Corbett, and, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of those that are out there, um, but he happens to be local to us. And he went out and he really said, here's how we're going to use virtual and they stepped outside the boundaries of what our platform really did. And that showed us is, you know, more, we did stuff with high school students, claim your future showcase, where usually all these things were in person. Um, and it just showed other organizations what they could do um, out there. We did one with a, a school that did their STEM project on there where instead of, you know, in person, they had their science project and every, the judges would come by. Well, now they did the same thing, but on our platform. And so they had a little video of their experiment and they had their about them. So the judges came in and just got to read, watch their video and then do their voting. We had a client do a murder mystery on our platform where they built an entire murder mystery, like the clue game um, on the platform. So it was People, you know, uh, our clients that would think of stuff that were outside of what our normal platform was and then use it for different things, because then we could say, oh, we go to different companies and say, here's more of a value. It's not just a career fair. It's a individual training, a resource of them. Have some fun with the platform. Yeah. Wow. Well, what, what a fun way to, to leverage the platform. I love to see people do that. Um, yeah, like take these, take these tools and make them even better. Um, for their for their own purposes. So I appreciate that assessment. You know, it's like your your clients, some of the, the first clients were those catalysts for making it take off because I, I, I think it's the the sign of a strong entrepreneur to know that there's you know, there's other people that, that influence your success, you know, because I've interviewed a lot of people, and, you know, even the billionaires will tell you it, it's it's timing and it's luck. And obviously you can position yourself to be in the position to accept that many different times, but there's usually a key player who just helps you kind of skyrocket and kick off the ground, you know, that key client or a mentor or somebody. So for you, it, it seemed to be some key client accounts that ended up just really helping that platform grow. So I'd love to see that. Yeah. And I went through multiple uh, mentoring programs as well. So, you know, I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs on this, on this channel and stuff is, you know, and if you can look for local mentoring programs, so FAU here in South Florida, uh, it's called Tech Runway. Uh, I was I was part of that. They actually came to me and said, hey, we want you to be part of this um, where it was at. But I also went there's called uh, another one down here in South Florida called the Venture Mentoring Team. And these are just people that are volunteering at the time. They could be business owners uh, that sold their business and they are here. And it's almost like having a board of directors at no cost. 
right? You're not giving up a percentage of your, you know, that because so many people are like, oh, I'll, I'll be a, I'll help you out. I'll mentor you, but you got to give me a percentage. And they don't do that. And they're here. And I'll tell you that my first one with the venture mentoring team, um, I got in and, and they had me do a pitch scrub. And so they went over my pitch and this was pre-COVID. And I walked out of there. I called my business partner and I was like, I was like, I got to go have a beer. I was like, I felt like I just went 12 rounds with Tyson. I'm like, they beat me up so bad about everything. But they said, this is why we do this, because we want to make sure that you're coachable and, and that you're going to listen to ideas that we have, because we're going to volunteer our time. So if you don't have a good mentor there, find one. They're out there. Right. There's there. There are, you know, some of them are the colleges. I mean, especially if you're a veteran as well, um, they're all over like Veterans Florida here. Um, they have mentoring groups as well. Um, and a lot of the colleges, some small colleges that, you know, last year when I, I went, to, I just took a veterans entrepreneurship class. Well, that class then led me to a pitch competition for this for the school it was at FAU. I won that pitch competition and then I went to the state level and then I won that pitch competition. So then that got my name out there, right? That got my first article in a magazine about me because it was, it was free press, right? So if you're looking, it's, it's not just about, you know, the company, but as this, you know, as a CEO, right, I have to build my brand as well so that people understand Steve Edwards, but they also understand the premier virtual side. So, you know, you can go out there and you can get free press, Right. Just by getting into, you know, a pitch competition, uh, you know, a, a, a mentoring group or something like that, because they're all over the place. And the more you can get your name out there, the more it gets your company name out there. Um, you can, you know, not all that costs money. You know, getting a PR firm is expensive and, they're, you know, you can there's a lot of stuff that you can do just just because of the mentor groups. Right. Yeah, I love that. Well, and, and, you know, Steve, we're coming to the end of the interview here. So can you tell people where to connect with you uh, first as well? Uh, you can go to premiervirtual.com and learn a little bit about what we do on the website. If you want a strategy session to just about how to, you know, help your business grow, if you're looking to hire or trade show or anything, or if you want a demo of the platform, you can get all of that right there. One of my team members can be there and either show you a strategy session uh, or demo of the platform. Again, premiervirtual.com. Love it. So make sure you check that out. It's premiervirtual.com. We'll also link that here in the show notes as well for those of you who are watching this. So Steve, I want to ask you one final question just to wrap up this interview because you have given us a lot of really good content. I hope that uh, people will take a lot of the lessons you've learned from here or you've taught here as well as the, the people that you've recommended. So if you could give us one final parting piece of guidance, what would it be? I'd say there's two. One, find a good mentoring group, but two, hire the right people around you. And sometimes the right people might be the people you think are wrong. Um, and, and, and I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit is, I, you know, I had one of the mentors that was speaking to me one time said, everybody now growing up that's coming up into the entrepreneur, young business, especially in the technology world, is have somebody on your partnership that is based as an IT. Because you're, if not, you're always going to be relying on other people that you don't know. So have the team around you that I don't know everything, but I built a team around me that if I have a question, I can go to. You know, And I gave up a percentage of my business to have the right team members around me so that we can grow. 